Some time back I made a video on how I created these resin castings of Hot Wheels cars that I cut in half and polished. The idea was to show some of the inner construction of the cars, especially the metal post that Mattel mushrooms out to hold the cars together. I'm working on another video where I'll need some visual aids, similar to these, and decided to make a new car to use in that video, but wanted one without the resin. That all being the case, I would be lying if I said that I was only making these for the video, as I have a sort of obsession with cutaway mechanical items. Any item that has portions or plates removed or windows into its inner workings is, and always has been, very interesting to me. As a kid, I remember thinking why they didn't make computers with clear cases, then later they did, and I spent a lot of time dusting out the dust bunnies inside of my iMac. Anyway, I want to make a simple cutaway car that will allow me to show the inner construction of a Hot Wheels car. A project that I really thought would be very simple, but assumptions being what they are, took me much longer than I ever thought it would. Of course, I also thought it would be nice to step away from the paint-by-numbers approach, so to speak, to most of my videos and do something a little bit different. So let's get started. Alright, the model I chose to chop up is this custom 67 Pontiac Firebird. Now obviously you could do this to any car, but I specifically chose this one due to the fact that the hood was already gone, exposing the interior plastic below. This will save me a lot of work, and more important, the final car will still look good, or at least better than what a normal car would look like if you remove the hood and expose the interior plastic. Another less important item is that the car has a metal body, which this car has. I also ended up liking the blue tinted windshield as it shows up well in the final car. I will say that I'm not a huge fan of this car as shown here. This is part of the 50th anniversary black label cars. All those cars have gold accents, and I'm not a huge fan of gold. So I plan to remove the gold and replace it with chrome. I also would have liked this car much better if they had painted it black, like a lot of the other cars in this series. Black and gold just look good together. And this metallic paint and gold, not so much. Then to throw in a blue windshield, I really don't get where they were going with this one. I guess I'm not the only one not liking it, as there were dozens more warming the pegs with this one. So now I'm going to start on cutting up the body. There's no real trick here. I used a drill and a dremel to do most of the heavy lifting as far as metal removal goes. Later I'll clean it up with some needle files and some sanding sticks. For some reason I thought this would go rather quick and instead I ended up spending several hours over the course of two days working on it. Most of this time was spent with the files and getting all the cuts on one side to match with the cuts on the other side. And then there was the sanding. I must have burned through four or five sanding sticks trying to smooth out all the edges. I'll not be painting the car and instead using another process you'll see later, but this process still needs pretty smooth surfaces to look good, thus all the sanding. So I'm just going to do a little music montage for you here. I don't put music in my videos very often, and if you don't want to hear it, then mute the video until the 4 minute and 50 second timestamp, and I'll meet you there. Okay, I finally have all the cuts made and can remove what's left of the paint with some aircraft paint remover. 
I like to leave the paint on during the cutting stage as it does offer a very small amount of protection to the metal surface if the tool goes skating off. Next I'll sand down the metal to remove any small pits in the surface. I will be leaving the mold lines in as I plan to show them as an example in the future video. After sanding I'll go over the entire body with some 4 aught steel wool to make sure all the sanding lines are gone. Now I'm going to move outside and set up my air eraser to sandblast the body. This serves two purposes. One, it normalizes the metal brightness. If you look at the metal of the car, you'll see that it has all sorts of shades, a splotchy look, so to speak. The air eraser cleans all this up and gives the metal a uniform shade. The second thing it does is clean up all the cuts I made and blends everything together. No matter how much sanding I do to the cut areas and the metal in general, it will always have small directional scratches in it. The air eraser removes all these small scratches and gives a uniform texture to the metal. So in other words, this is the long way of saying that the air eraser normalizes the brightness and the texture of the metal, which is going to be really important here in a second. Alright, so you can see here after I was done that the metal now looks like it has been painted with a gray primer, which is good because that's what you want it to look like. If it doesn't look like this, then I need to sand more and re-blast it. But this looks fine, so now I can polish the metal. I'm going to use 4 aught steel wool to do this, but brass wool would probably work much better. But since I don't have any of that, steel wool will have to do. The trick here is to go in one direction and go over the car with a light touch. This steel wool can put in noticeable scratches in the metal if I press too hard. After I'm done, I'll wash the car with some soap and water and then let it dry. Here's how it turned out. The point of doing all this is to end up with a nice clean uniform look to the metal. Compare this shot of the car to the one just before I sandblasted and you can see that this looks a lot cleaner. It's a small touch but it makes these bare metal cars look much better than if you omit it. If I was going to polish it to a mirror shine I would do that next but I'm not going to do that to this car. Now I want to start working on removing the gold from the interior plastic. It's probably no surprise but Mattel doesn't gold plate the plastic of these cars. Instead they just paint the chrome gold. Or to be more correct, they paint the vacuumized aluminum gold. To remove the paint, I need a solvent that will dissolve it without hurting the aluminum. In my case, I use ELO, as it will not harm the aluminum layer. I can just pour some in a small dish and drop the part in. After some time, I can come back and scrub it lightly with a small paintbrush, and it will remove the paint layer, leaving the shiny chrome unharmed. All that is left now is the base. I have removed the chrome and color from the wheels with some non-acetone nail polish remover because I want the car to have a stripped down look, as basic as I can get it. I want to make two more cutouts in the base, but first I need to remove the wheels and axles with a sprue cutter. After they're removed, I can use my Dremel to make some slots in the base. These slots will allow you to look into the car and see the axle setup from the bottom when the car is put back together. As much as I dislike using the Dremel on metal, I really hate using it on plastic due to the smell and because the Dremel is more likely to just take off on plastic compared to metal as it can dig into it much easier. Obviously you should consider safety when using the Dremel on anything, especially eye safety as it sends little sharp slivers of metal straight in your face. You've probably realized that this car isn't going to win any beauty contests. It would win a weight loss contest hands down. But it's not made to look good so much as to show off the different aspects of Hot Wheels engineering and design, which is its intended purpose at this point. And really that's something most people don't think about when they pull one of these cars off the pegs. I take these cars apart all the time and I'm honestly taken back by some of the ingenious engineering of these toys. The fact that they go back together so well speaks volumes, not to mention all the safety concerns that have to be weighed for each design. Then there's the cost of making each car that has to also be designed into it. Little changes can save pennies per car. I don't know, I find it all very interesting. I use Tester's ELO to remove the gold paint. If you can't find that, then enamel thinners will also work. Just takes a lot longer. Brake fluid might work too, but I haven't tried it. I'm sure others will comment below, so be sure to check out the comments for other methods. Maybe one will work for you in your area. I hope you've enjoyed this little detour, something a little bit different, and I will be getting back to my normal stuff in the next video. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.